You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to do a chat chat regarding PlayStation clone consoles. Oh boy, I have found a lot of them and some of them are really bad, like absolutely wicked shizzle. But still, when you're looking at some of them, they were surprisingly cool and there was even one with them pie in the inside. Yeah, they made all kinds of wicked clones and that is why I dedicate this channel also to. I love like old school retro games, but I just love to search those wicked things. They're absolutely horrible that you shouldn't even buy, but I buy them so you don't have to. Uh, they come even including two controllers and a light gun and they look like a PlayStation 1 slim model. Yep, and it even comes including a multi-game card. The kits include a light gun or this weird looking very cheap one. Who many surprises am I going to be breaking? And some weird like mini controllers with no shoulder buttons. Yeah, these things are really awful. And of course the toilet paper metal. And this toilet paper metal even showcases other versions. Yeah, they made a lot of these fake clones. And that is even making it more wicked than it already is. And then of course we're having the multi-game card that came with it, it's the cool baby. The 500 to 1 with a lot of familiar titles. Yeah, like the Ninja Turtles since we on here, Contra, all kinds of versions, but most of them are like cheated versions. And you know when you're looking at the overall gameplay performance, it's similar to the cheap ones we have like reviewed. I think that was like 10 year old devices, so the overall quality is exactly the same. And this cool baby 500 to 1 multi-game card is actually not that bad. It's clearly another Famicom. It's kind of cool to play these old school games, but the visual and audio quality is absolutely horrible. So when it comes to like enjoying Famicom games, in my opinion, this is not the way how you want to do it. It's a fun novelty to look at, but that's the only thing. But let's go on with the show because there is so much craziness that I've reviewed here. Because if you're going to be reviewing all kinds of different versions, you're going to see similarities. And this is one of those same things only with a different name they also called a bit super but this thing is already like a couple of years old and oh boy it has some wear and tear <laughs> Where I was enjoying myself with some Double Dragon, Adventure Island, yeah, that is a different experience. The lines are absolutely nuts, but with some wiggling around with the card, which I managed to get a normal, let's say, screen. But the downside to all of these things are they are so bad quality. And if you're going to pay, let's say, too much for like an old one, it's highly possible it doesn't even work or we're having the lines because of the card with input slot. It's so bad. But in the end, when you're looking at this device, they completely butcher it. And it's quite unfortunate because you do need to put a lot of force on the top cover to break it off. It was not even in the box anymore. But that is actually what we're getting when we're buying a lot of these things. Sometimes I'm buying boxes full just to see if there's one working. So with the hype of the PlayStation 1 Mini being released, yeah, they also implemented these like <laughs> PlayStation 1 Mini clones. Yep. They were continuing the saga of 8-bit stuff, but the only difference is they're having a different case. And this is what I've seen a lot with NES's, Super NES's, PlayStation Mini and even Sega Minis. Yeah, it's absolutely funny, but also kind of bad at the same time. But now with a built-in multi-game card, 620 games and the same cheap controllers with the flimsy overall feel, you cannot break them easily, but they smell pretty awful. But the overall, let's say, quality, yeah, it's different. Simply because we're also using a USB port now. But no, you cannot plug in, like, say, random Xbox of a Bido controller. These things are very limited. So when it comes to these Super NES uh, or NES or PlayStation Minis, there are all kinds of different versions out there. And you can see there's quite some interesting overall, let's say, form factor difference between all of them. And when you're going to be stacking them all up, you can just see how big and how small that last version is. And on top, of course, is the new version or at least the release version with the USB ports. Yeah, I don't know what they are going to be doing over there, but it's kind of interesting to see all of them. And comparing them with the original PlayStation 1 Mini, they didn't put a lot of effort in details, but they managed to get at least the form factor right. So far, I can actually compare and see over here. We cannot play any Famicom or NES cartridges anymore, but the overall performance of the NES is absolutely not bad. I was quite surprised by it. 
And I think also this is one of my favorite ones called the Fun Station, where they ripped off the PlayStation logo and made it an F. Yeah, so this is absolutely one of those systems that I needed to pick up. It's in very bad condition. The plastic is horrible. You can even see the connectors are just completely crooked. And this has nothing to do with the wear and you cannot even open it normally. Plug in your Famicom cartridge and just play. But oh boy, this thing is really bad. And I just, again, I needed to pick it up and also implement it in this video. So when you find this on like a flea market, you're paying like one or two dollars for it. Maybe you can try it and have some fun with it. Uh, but yeah, there is nothing good about it. And I mean, in particular, the case, the controllers, there is absolutely nothing.